Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a one more concept in collision resolution techniques in hashing that is quadratic probing. So in our previous session we have discussed about a few more uh, collision resolving techniques that is a separate chaining and under the open addressing we have seen the linear probing. Now we'll see the second one that is a quadratic probing. So in the linear probing, we are just adding the J value to the key and we are applying the mod operation so that whatever the result we are getting in that particular index, we are just storing the value. So the main drawback of this linear probing is, so in order to search for any element, it will be very difficult because the, all the elements will be occupying the continuous memory locations. And also it is somewhat difficult to uh, store a new value into the index that we are calling it as a clustering clustering is the main disadvantage of linear probing now we'll see the quadratic probing so in this quadratic probing instead of uh, adding just a j value which starts with a one here we'll be adding the j square value so here the hash function of key is equal to k plus j square mod size of table hash table size so this is the formula which we are using to store the hash code i mean to find out the hash code where the key should be closed so let us uh, assume the same thing so let us take some hash table with a 10 size so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So let us take this is a hash table. Hash table with a size 10. The size can be anything. Now, uh, for example, uh, for a little bit of uh, computations, we will see the file size, the hash table size as a 10. Now, let us take the example. So what are the values we are supposed to store in that particular hash table? So 11, 22, 32, 43, 53, 63. Let us assume this one, right? So we know the division method, right? So division method. So this is a h dash of k and this is a h of k. So which mean k mod size size for example 11 apply the h of 11 so 11 mod size of the thing is 10 which gives one as a result so in the one hash code we have to store the 11 so here i will be storing the 11 so no need of calculating the h dash of k because here we got the hash code, hash code 1 which is already available to store the data so we are simply we are storing the data in that particular uh, reference Coming to the second one, 22. So again, h of 22. So 22 mod 10, which will give 2 as a hash code. So check whether it is available or not. In the hash table, 2 is available, right? So there is no collision. So directly we can store 22 in location 2. And the next one is 32. So which gives a h of 32 will be 32 mod 10. Again, it gives a 2. Check whether it is available or not. Yeah, obviously, it is no because 22 is already stored in the location 2. Here, there is a collision. Here, there is a collision, right? Because, so for two elements, for two keys, we are getting the same hash code. So, what we have to calculate, h dash of 32 will be 32 plus j square where j will be value of j will be starting always from 1. So let us take 1 square mod 10. So which gives 33 mod 10, which gives 3 as a hash code. So check whether it is available or not. Yes, it is available. So in 3, we can store 32. And the next one, 43. 
So H of 43, you can see 43 mod 10, which is 3. Already the data is available in 3. So there is a collision. So what we have to do? So we have to go with the H dash of K. So H dash of 43, which gives 43 plus 1 square. Always it starts with 1, right? So 1 square mod 10, which gives 44 mod 10, which is a 4, which is available. So we can store 43 in location 4. Next, 53. H of 53 is equal to 53 mod 10, which gives a 3. So there is a collision. Here we can store this one, here we can store this one, and here we can store this one. Now, H dash of 53 which gives 53 plus 1 square mod 10, which gives 54 mod 10, right, which gives a 4. So check whether 4 is available. No, already 4 is also having one more element. So again, there is a collision. Now increment J value. So 53 plus 2 square 53 plus 2 square mod 10. So 2 square is a 4. 53 plus 4, 57. 57 mod 10, which gives the result as 7. So check whether it is available. Yes, it is available. So in, in the reference 7, we can store 53. And similarly, the next one is 63. So I'll arrange this 11, 22, right? So, 63. So, H of 63 is equal to 63 mod 10, which gives a 3. Already, th the element is available in 3. So, here we got a collision. So, H dash of 63 is equal to 63 plus 1 square mod 10 which gives 64 mod 10, which gives a 4, which is already available. The element is available. So again, we got some collision. So increment the J value and find out the next one. So 63 plus 2 square mod 10, which gives 4, 2 square is a 4, 4 plus 3, 7. So 67 mod 10 which gives a 7. So already element is available. This is also not possible. Again, there is a collision. Now 63 plus 3 square mod 10, which gives 3 square 9 plus 63. 9 plus 63, 72 mod 10, which gives a 2. So 2 is already available. So again, there is a collision. Now, 63 plus 4 square mod 10, which gives 16 plus 64, which is 80 mod 10, which gives a 0. So, 0, yes, 0 is available. In the 0, we can store the 63 value. So, 63. So, in this way, we will calculate the j square value and we'll add it to the key so that we'll be finding the hash code if there is a collision in a normal collision method okay in a normal method normal hashing method right so in here one drawback is not all the references will be filled here okay so there might be some slots where the elements can't be inserted so that will be the one case. Here also we will be calling as a clustering that we call it as a secondary clustering. That main drawback of a quadratic program probing is also a clustering. So the main drawback is not all the references, not all the columns of the hash table will be filled with the elements. And also searching will be somewhat difficult. Okay, searching of an element will be difficult in quadratic probing. Right. So this is how 
the quadratic problem will be implemented. So I'll stop here in our next session. We'll go with the next one that is a double hashing. So we have seen the separate chaining as well as the open addressing. In the open addressing, we have seen the linear probing and now we have seen the quadratic probing and then we'll see the what is uh, and how it will be implemented in the double set hashing. Right. So let's stop here. Uh, if you are having any doubts regarding this one, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely, I will try to clarify all your doubts. And if you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.